little different procedure, a little different this and a little different that. Same one, I guess. Well, actually, not the same one, so this is what's left after 67 years. It is good to see all of you folks. Um, we will have a media, oh, there I am. We will have a media moment at the end of the service. Uh, most of you, I think, are on, how many of you are on Facebook and on uh, Our Savior Lutheran Church Facebook? A lot of you, most of you. Um, as you know, I posted um, a list of people that have been nominated for the transition team. Uh, and I've heard back from a lot of them already. If your name is on that, there's another list out in the, the corridor by where we pick up our, uh, our bulletins for this morning. Um, what, what the transition team is going to do, well, I'll save that for after. If your name is on that list, take a look at that. If it is, come on back in just for a little bit. If you're willing to, um, to make your voice heard and to serve. Now, this team basically is just for the si next six or eight months. It doesn't go on forever and ever. So uh, like uh, so many other things, you're thinking, oh, boy, if I get on that, what else is he going to get me to do after that? Um, we're trying to look for new faces or people to represent different age groups, different uh, portions of ministry here. And their input is very important for the mission and the vision of the church and uh, for where we're going. Because everybody knows what the mission is, right? Go into all nations, teaching them everything I have commanded you and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the mission of every church. But where are you going? What are you going to do? Where are you headed? You're in the car. You got it started. You put it in gear. Now where are we going to head? And that's what the vision team helps with. Anyway, if your name is on that list, just stick around for a couple of minutes. We won't be meeting until August, but I, I thought we would get that lined up so we can hit the road running. Um, today we are using our worship service. It begins on page 203. Yeah, so you want, if you want to follow along in the hymn book, you may because we're going to be utilizing uh, Divine Service Setting four. All the songs are in our hymn book. Uh, Sam will be leading us in that and his, and his abilities on the organ. We have our lay readers and our um, elder that's going to read today. Is he here? Where is he? Oh, there he is. There's Paul. Actually, I had written down Dan, but you told me Paul the other night. Uh, but the, the theme today is the, good, the very good Samaritan. We know about the Good Samaritan. Without further ado, you have heard enough from me. Let us begin with our first song. And I believe it is, there is a name I love to hear, or how sweet the name of Jesus sounds. And that's in our LSB 524. It'll be up on the screen. Sing it with some gusto, will you?
Shall we rise as we join in our order of service, which is divine service setting four, beginning on page 203, as we make our beginnings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are king. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Together then, Almighty God, have mercy upon us for his confessed sin. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> For our hymn of praise, we're going to turn to either hymn 801 or on our screen. Let us sing, How Great Thou Art. If you're able, let's stay uh, risen from our seat. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how Thou art. Up 
open, I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. And on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he wept and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation, and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall die in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In our Old Testament for today, Kathy's going to come up and read it for us, and we appreciate that. You hear about the second greatest commandment, that you should love your neighbor as yourself, and where it comes from, the Old Testament book of Leviticus. So when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyards bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely. And so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall feel it, fear your, Lord, your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the, the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we rise out of respect for the Holy Gospel that Paul is going to share with us today? Let us join in the Alleluia verses. the 
said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he said to him on his own then he set him on his own animal, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you <coughs> spend I will repay you when I come back. Which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we remain standing, if we will join our hearts and our voices in what we believe in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, who suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and sits in heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, and he will come again. in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you both for sharing. You may be seated. This is a song actually for next service, but it says so much I thought I would share it with you. Uh, many of you know this song, In Christ Alone. Anybody uh, familiar with this? It's been re-released many, many times. And it uh, talks to us about how our hope is founded and upon whom it is founded, and it is upon Christ alone. So if you know any of this, you're welcome to join in. Christ alone, 
My hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. His cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving seems. Comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness. Scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, sin's curse is lost, its grip on me. I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No powers of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. We know this story. Many of us, uh, when I was a kid, we acted it out in Sunday school. A story about a helpless, hapless man. There's a slide that goes with this, or a number of them. Why don't we have that first one? That fell among thieves. What precipitated this story, though, was a young lawyer, and it says in our gospel lesson. He wanted to test Jesus, so he, testing doesn't mean that he was trying to, to trip him up. That's just the way people were back then. You would dialogue back and forth when it came to things that you believed in. And this was a healthy dialogue, and in many ways, a very good one between Jesus and this man, because he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, instead of answering, he said, what do the scriptures say? Because a lawyer back then was one who was steeped in the law of the Lord because there was no difference between secular and religious law, at least in the Jewish mind. And he spoke very, very wisely, didn't he? Because he quoted from Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. We know that, don't we? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, all your mind. You hear me talk about that a lot. And the second like unto the first, like Jesus says, taken from Leviticus 19 verse 18. And you heard Kathy share that with us moments ago. And what is that? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus complimented him and said, you have spoken 
rightly. But then the man, he should have been quiet. You know, like when we were kids, I've told you before that my dad used to say, Michael, if you would just be quiet. He didn't say it quite so politely. But if we would just be quiet, well, this lawyer couldn't be quiet anyway because he's trying to justify himself, right? And he says, well, who is my neighbor? Well, Jesus started to tell him this little story in a parable. It may have been a true story. A lot of these stories, you know, when Jesus said there was a man, it sounds like it actually happened. But there was a man, and he was a Jewish man, and he was making his way along the roadway, and he fell among robbers, or the robbers fell upon him. They beat him half senseless. They took all of his possessions, his money, his little donkey, if he had one in this, uh, in this travel, even his water probably his clothes and his sandals, and left him there to die. And we're told what happened. There he is, laying out there in the middle of nowhere. And we're told a Levite comes by. Now, a Levite is from the tribe of Levi, and they were set aside long, long time uh, before this, way back when the tribes were being allocated their their area and their acreage and their land. And the Levites were not going to have any land. They were going to own cities, you see, because they were going to be the impartial ones. They were going to be the ones that would be the temple, the priests, the musicians, the servants who were there, uh, probably the maintenance crew. They were people that were set aside for the service of the Lord. And their lineage went all the way back to Aaron, who many see as the first great high priest of Israel, and Moses, the brother. So you can see how long ago that had. This had been all the way back to 1472 or so, if you believe that Ramses II was that Pharaoh that finally let them go under duress. But this Levite took one look at the man and he did what? He walked on by. Walk on by, walk on. You were thinking it. I don't look like Dionne Warwick, I'll tell you that. Another man came along. If that wasn't blatant enough, the other man was an actual priest. Might have been a Levite also. Probably was. But took one look at that man. Now this is the guy who actually goes through the procedures of taking care of all the the sacred implements in the church. This is the fella who um, has has a hand in putting up that great screen in the temple that was erected there by Herod. It's still there at that time. You've got to remember that thing that took 300 men to raise up. He was the one that was there to help to intercede on behalf of the people to God himself. And he took one look at this man, and he walked on by, walked on by. Now, you guys know what this is like. We have all been stuck out in the middle of nowhere. You guys, you know, you live in the middle of nowhere here. I know, because I live in the middle of nowhere when I'm out. People say, you live in Shamoy. Well, Shamoy is 11 miles away, and there's 385 people if you count the dogs running around town. And I think one person has some chickens and a pig or two. You know what it's like to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Your car stops. I don't care what year of a car you've got. You can have a 25-year-old car, a brand-new car. There you are on the side of the road. And people just drive on by, and they honk. They know you've got a cell phone. They could care less, right? wrong. I know because I pulled over. Um, They had uh, a road that was closed as I was trying to make my way across country. Don't do that. Don't do that, by the way. (laughs) Don't take back roads unless you really know the gravel roads that go with it. Have an Illinois Gazette there so you can wander back. But I'll tell you what, you can't sit anywhere for more than a couple of minutes without somebody stopping by and they they don't talk like that up here. They do in Missouri, though. Roll down the window and go, you okay there, boy? We help you. People are helpful. They don't walk on by. They don't drive on by. They want to make sure 
that you were okay because you're out there and it's not a pleasant experience, whether it's 100 degrees in the shade or whether it's minus 6. I know it doesn't get that cold here. Remember, I was in Rockford for eight and a half years. It gets cold where I'm at. Just add 20 to 30 mile an hour winds and you got northern and central Illinois. It's dangerous, and people want to make sure you're okay. But these guys didn't do it. So who is it that stopped by? It was a Samaritan. Now, that sounds like a good thing, because we're all used to saying, oh, he was a good Samaritan. He helped them, he stopped, and he did this and that. Well, back then, people did not like the Samaritans. These were people that were stuck there between Galilee and and between Judah, they were right in the, they had their little town of Samaria, and it was up on a hillside, and it was a fortress. These were the people that, if you go back in time, with the Babylonian captivity, remember that? Way back in 586 B.C., you knew that date, didn't you? Well, they came in and they conquered, remember that? And they basically took over the land, and they took all of the people that they could and placed them over there, in the Mesopotamian Valley, in the area of, guess where, Iran, Iraq, that kind of place. That's always in the news, even back then. And they took their people and they moved them there. How better to control an area that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles away? They can't just jump in their car and be there in a few hours. No, it took a long time. So that's where a lot of these people came from, along with the other tribes. You've got the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites, all these people that are around, and they congregate in this little area, and they have a hybrid kind of a religion. Some of them kind of believe in the Jewish God a little bit. He's the high God, maybe, but they also sort of believe in Baal and Asherah, these old gods that were around in the land of Palestine at the time. And some of them even had the old gods from way back in Persia and Babylon. Well, they were an abomination. So much so that when people had to travel from Jerusalem and Judah up to Galilee, they would cross over the river Jordan and walk on that side of the river rather than deal with walking upon Samaritan soil. That's how much they disliked the Samaritans. So who was it that stopped? It was the hated, defiled Samaritan. And what did he do? He didn't take it upon himself to say, ooh, I'm touching something dirty. I'm touching something that's bloody. I'm touching something that's bruised. I'm touching an enemy of mine. He took care of him. He washed his wounds. If he had some kind of healing salve with him, that was wonderful. He took whatever cloths he had to wrap him up, and he put him on his own donkey, lifting him up. And what did he do? He took him to the nearest town, and he gave him to an innkeeper, and he said, look, he's a merchant. Obviously, he's got some money. He's got a nice uh, transportation. You know, that's like a, the equivalent of a, of a Prius or something, the little donkeys were at the time, or a Volt or some of those other heavily subsidized vehicles that we're all supposed to be able to charge up on wind power and solar panels. Boy, I'm a little political sneaking that in there. But he said, I'll pay you back. When I come back, if there's any extra charge, then when I come back, then I will settle up with you. And there was that man in the charge of the innkeeper. And he had no problem with that because by that time he's cleaned up a little bit and this is a Jewish man, this is a Jewish man who runs the inn. No problem whatsoever. And money is money. He doesn't care if it comes from a Samaritan or not. You're saying, what does this have to do with what we're talking about, the very good Samaritan? Well, when Jesus looked at the man, he said, Who is your neighbor? And he rightly said, The man who helped him. You see, so much is expended in this world for who knows what and who does what. And I know in this world we don't have any prejudices whatsoever. I'm being facetious. 
We don't look down upon people, do we, because of their skin color, because of the turban they wear on their hair or the, the covering they wear upon their head. We don't look down upon people who don't dress like we do. I drove by, um, where was I in Peoria? It was an interesting area. A lot of bikers. I don't know what road I was traveling <laughs> down. There were two or three biker bars. I'm not going to try to play in those, I'll tell you that. Why? Because we're going, oh, man, these guys look rough. They look scraggly. A lot of them are doctors and lawyers who just get their bike out on the weekend, and they like to, born to be wild, you know, weekend warrior. Put the tattoos on. Put your wife in a halter top. She can put a fake tattoo on the back. Somebody to lean against when you're driving around. But anyway, we don't look down on them, do we? We don't look down upon the Asian people. By the way, they do score higher on tests than we do usually because that's emphasized in their culture. We don't look down upon Indians. Did you ever travel across Illinois? Who owns uh, three-fourths of the hotels? They're smart people. They're hardworking people. How many of your family owns a hotel out in the middle of nowhere? But it might be the only place to stay. You see, we have this problem, too, is that we have these prejudices. I was raised in a very prejudiced family. My father moved over and over and over again because he couldn't stand the sight of black people. If they moved into the neighborhood, he was gone. And he was a good Lutheran man. He's the reason that I am a Lutheran pastor instead of an Irish Catholic police officer who's retired now. A lot of those named Mike Gallagher are priests. A lot of Mike Gallagher's who are priests, not too many Lutheran pastors. But we have the situation where we understand these prejudices. I'm not coming down on us. We all have them. I raised my sons uh, so that they are not prejudiced. My son went to uh, Lincoln University, which is uh, actually a black-founded uh, university, and um, I, I almost wish he did. He was the only white kid in the whole dormitory. And now he likes rap music. <laughs> oh. It's so melodic and so uplifting, most of it. Now, my son looks like a bouncer. He looks like one of those guys on the bikes. That just He's got a mohawk and a tattoos. And he's a sweet guy. He's sweeter than I am. But he looks like he could rip your fender off and eat your upholstery. The prejudices, though, that we deal with, we can understand. These were religious men. Why didn't they stop and help this individual? These were the people who worked in the church. Not to dig at the people who work in our churches, but they were the people that should know better. They're the ones that understood the law. They're the ones that understood this Leviticus 19.18, and yet they chose to ignore it. You know, St. Augustine saw this allegorically, this story, and some have tried to displace that. But it's so easy to see how this fits in with the whole picture of Christianity and the whole reason that Jesus Christ came down to this earth. Because we are like that man who's walking along the road. Because we have been set upon by robbers. Only these robbers are the flesh and the world and the devil. Because we have a wicked Adam or Eve inside of ourselves that's trying to lead us away from God. And it batters us in many ways in this earthly journey. We have the world around us, and it's a very wicked world if you are a believer. It truly is. Tell me one program, and not the kids' programs on Netflix, that really isn't wild and wooly with sex, violence, ultra-violence in some ways, language, um, the occult. It's craziness. And that's just a, a glimpse of the world. When other people say, we're the great Satan, look at what they're seeing we broadcast on in the Internet. And see if you would come up with a, an objective view of what America really is like. And then we have the devil himself going around with all of his fallen angels trying to pull us away from God. We are beset by robbers that are trying to pull us away and have succeeded in pulling us away from the Lord God and have 
beaten us and left us in the roadway of our life. Hopefully to die. Hopefully to die eternally. They've robbed us of our dignity. These things have. They've robbed us of the perfection that we were created in the image of Almighty God at the very beginning. They have robbed us of eternal life with our Heavenly Father. But our Heavenly King, Jesus, has come to do battle with these things. You heard those words not long ago from Romans 8, right? We are more than conquerors through him who died for us and who rose again. He is the one who came down to battle and run these robbers off. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, is what we're told in the book of James. It says in the book of James in the first chapter, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The demons also believe and tremble at the name of Jesus. You see, this is what they call the balm of Gilead. We sing that song not so much anymore. How many of you still sing that song? There is a balm in Gilead. This is what it's talking about, that Jesus came to be the one that binds up our wounds, our spiritual wounds. He's the one who is there to tend those open sores and stains that we have upon ourselves. He is the one who is there to lift us up after he binds us up upon his shoulders if necessary and helps us to walk along life's way again. We've got another slide. You've seen this picture. Isn't it appropriate? He is there at the inn, and says, take care of this man. He takes care of us. He has paid the price for our upkeep by the blood that he has shed. Even though we and our sins have nailed Jesus to the cross, it wasn't just the Jews way back then. It wasn't just the Romans way back then. All of our sins nailed us to the cross. And this shows how helpless we are, even though we've got that hammer and nail in our hands ready to put him back on that cross and to nail him and keep him there. He has paid for our upkeep by his precious blood. And he'll leave on deposit until he comes back as we sing his good words and spirit. I just heard a ding, so I think it's time for me to be quiet. One more slide so that we truly might go back and do what? We might be empowered to do what? Sure, to love our Lord God with all that we are, with all that we have, and that we truly might take somebody's hand and love them as God has loved us and as we love ourselves. In the blessed name of Jesus. We bring these offerings forward because that's what makes it possible for us to keep this place going, which hopefully will become a citadel in this neighborhood. Thank you, Mary. For the spreading of the word of Jesus Christ. Accept our offerings, Lord. They are not worthy, but use them so that the word might get out, so that truly we might be renovated, we might be forgiven, and that Renovation and forgiveness might lead us to love others as you have loved us. Thank you for allowing us to be here, Lord God, in freedom. And thank you that we are able to share a little bit back with you of what you have given to us in an abundance. We pray this in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. We do, Heavenly Father, ask that you be with all of us, reminding us, Lord, not to have our prejudices, not to hold things against people because of a different color and creed and religion, but that truly we might see all people as brothers and sisters. Let us reach out, Lord God, not only to the people in this neighborhood, but to the people in our own family, at our work, wherever we might go. Let us be shining examples of what it means to be a good Samaritan, to be a very good Samaritan like your son, Jesus the Christ. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray for our country, Lord God, be with all of those who are elected and appointed that you might work on their heart and their mind, reminding them always, Lord God, that you are there, that you are in charge. Have your way with them, Lord God, irregardless of what they believe. In that light, Lord God, we ask that your will be done in the Ukraine, that if there is a way, Lord God, we make a claim on peace in the blessed name of Jesus, we would ask that the chaos would stop that you would bring a halt to this, Lord God, and bring peace to this area and a resolution. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we have a long list of people who are feeling ill in mind and body and spirit. Be with them, Lord God. Remind them always that you are there to bind them up and to buoy them up according to your divine will. But spiritually, your healing is there through your Son, Jesus the Christ. And when we ask for that kind of healing, you say a resounding yes. Thank you for that, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, be with all of our soldiers, Lord God, our law enforcement um, officers, be with our emergency workers, our linemen, our road crew. They're all out there trying to keep this all working, Lord God. Send your angels down to be with them as they are protecting us. Lord, in your mercy, And finally, Lord God, we do raise up to you, Mike, Fazio. We thank you, Lord, for the life that you gave to Linda. We are sorry that the family has to go through the separation for a while, but we rejoice. All the many places that Linda and Mike have traveled in the world, now she has traveled to heaven above. Thank you, Lord God, for the faith you have placed in her heart and her mind. And thank you for the life you gave to her upon this earth, and especially life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things, Lord, we pray in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Shall we rise um, as we join in our service of the sacrament? The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us 
for the blessed communion. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. If you believe that Jesus Christ is God's Son, yea, God himself, if you believe that the very body and blood given and shed on the cross of Calvary for our sins is here, as we say, in, with, and under the bread and the wine, if you have examined yourself as I have and know that you need what is offered here, the forgiveness of your many sins, you're welcome to come and dine with the Lamb. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given unto death for you. This do as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same fashion also Jesus took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament and my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Welcome to our Lord's table. Let your body fall of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord poured out on the same cross that we might receive forgiveness and have eternal life. May his true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and through eternal life. Depart in peace. Welcome to our Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of our Lord given unto death on the cross for all of our sins. May his true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
There are many ways that you can help out. Um, we need help with the Vacation Bible School. Uh, Morgan has posted uh, things that are needed, ways that you can help, especially if you go on Facebook and look under Our Savior Lutheran Church. Uh, it's a plea for help so that we might be able to uh, reach out to this neighborhood to these children. So if you can help, please let her know. Go in peace, serve the Lord with gladness.